Now, the possibility that the COVID-19 virus leaked from a laboratory should not be ruled out. That's according to a former top Chinese government scientist who's been speaking to the BBC. George Gao was director of the Chinese Centre for Disease Control for much of the pandemic and has told a new BBC podcast that the question of the virus's origin remains open. Many scientists still believe that the virus is most likely to have passed naturally from animals to humans, but others argue that an accidental leak can't be ruled out. John Sudworth was our correspondent in China until he was forced to leave in 2021. He sent this report from New York. Ever since the world got its first glimpse of the deadly disease circulating in Wuhan, China has dismissed the theory that COVID might have leaked from a lab known to have been experimenting with coronaviruses as a lie. But now, one of China's most senior scientists seems far less forthright when I ask him about that possibility. You know, I haven't seen anything. You, you know, a lot of people have some suspicion, but uh, I haven't seen anything. But nor can you rule it out? For science, you have to keep yourself open-minded. Keep yourself open-minded means everything is possible. Don't rule out anything. Don't rule out anything, he says. But the lab leak theory was ruled out. Perhaps its association with this man helped much, cast it as a conspiracy theory. Have you seen anything at this point that gives you a high degree of confidence that the Wuhan Institute of Virology was the origin of this virus? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. As did the claims from some Western scientists of overwhelming evidence that the virus, which started in bats, passed naturally to humans, perhaps via other animals in a market, a route by which deadly pandemics are known to have emerged in the past. It was that past precedent that influenced the World Health Organization mission to Wuhan, when it too effectively ruled out a lab leak, one of the scientists tells me in an interview for our podcast. Everyone's biased, yes. I'm biased for um, natural origin because of everything we've seen in the past. The sheer amount of consumption of wild animal meat is such a known high risk situation. All along, other scientists, while agreeing that COVID may well have come from animals in a market, say there's not yet enough evidence to definitively rule out the other possibility that it leaked from a lab. And with the change of presidency here in the US, that view, now somewhat freed from its political associations, has gained traction. Following a review ordered by President Biden, two out of eight US intelligence agencies are now said to favor a lab leak with low to moderate confidence. And there's renewed focus on the wider issue of the risks of lab work with dangerous pathogens, although the political partisanship still looms large. The original mortality rate... Robert Redfield oh, yeah. was a Trump appointee to one of America's top scientific jobs. You know, I have 12 living grandchildren out of my 14. I think they're at high risk for a great pandemic in the next decade or two. And I think that pandemic is going to be caused by man, not nature, either intentional bioterrorism or or possibly just a lab accident. You, don't, you have no right to tell me not to ask questions. I have all the right. What, what, under what grounds? The signs of China's heavy-handed political control have been there from the start. And the mystery of what happened in Wuhan has become one of the most controversial questions of our time. But it's also one of the most important. Where did COVID come from? John Sudworth, BBC News, New York. Well, we're joined now by Ravi Gupta, Professor of Clinical Microbiology at the University of Cambridge. Professor Gupta, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, more than three years since this virus was first detected, lots of theories still abound regarding where it came from. Where do you think the virus came from? Well, it's, it's clear that there are two, two main possibilities. Uh, one is uh, that it was a natural spillover. And as has been mentioned in this program, these, these events are happening continually and there is a very, very high risk for them happening. Most of them, of course, don't become pandemics, but many human uh, infections occur as a result of uh, transmission from animals. And then, of course, uh, the other uh, possibility is, is that uh, whilst investigating 
um, viruses in bats that researchers at the Wuhan Institute of Virology inadvertently introduced a, a virus that was in the wild initially, but then uh, uh, through uh, leak in the lab or, or, or practices or infections in the lab uh, ended up um, uh, enabling that virus to transmit into humans but, um, with the market as a, a main expansion zone uh, for that virus. So those are the two main possibilities in people's minds. Of course, uh, the, the, the probability is, of course, is weighted towards the natural spillover event. Why is it so important to understand precisely where this virus came from? I think there are, there are two answers to that. I think that if this had been, not been such a, a severe pandemic with so much loss of life and so much economic destruction, then, then the, potentially the, the precise event will have been uh, le of less interest. But because this was such a major event, I think people really, really want to know exactly what happened. And they want to know all the possibilities, uh, even if those possibilities are small. And I do support that. Um, so I think that's one of the key reasons that people, uh, the public want to know. Scientists want to know, um, I guess, because uh, we want to get to the facts. That's what we do. And whether it makes much difference in terms of where we go from here uh, is more debatable because we realize that, there, that laboratories are places where uh, we do need uh, a, a, a degree of oversight and, um, and regulation uh, of, of what is conducted in those laboratories. And of course, uh, if this was a natural spillover, then the implications are that uh, we need to think about how we might limit those uh, uh, cross-species transmissions in uh, wet markets or in other forms of human-animal interface. Whether this does prove to be a lab leak or not, many people may question why a lab in the first place would be holding on to so many uh, deadly pathogens and viruses at all. Why might a laboratory need to or want to hold on to these kinds of things? Well, I think that that um, view uh, supposes that um, the viruses have been identified. But for, for, for some time, of course, when you bring um, specimens um, from bats into a, into a lab uh, under containment, you don't necessarily know what is in those samples. So they then need to undergo a, a, a process of sequencing, in other words, to figure out what genetic codes are in there and, and what viruses that those represent. And then to know which ones are dangerous or not, you then need to have a greater understanding through, through, you know, one of the ways we figure that out is through laboratory experiments. And so um, the, the level of risk in any one particular sample is, is very much unknown. And that's, and that's probably why we do need to do uh, a certain research in the right containment and safety, uh, safe environments in order to expand our knowledge of what is out there. Because if we don't know what's out there and what's dangerous, we will struggle to defend ourselves in the future from the natural spillover events that happen in nature and then transmit into humans. Okay, Professor Ravi Gupta from the University of Cambridge, thank you very much.